it's one hour of not thinking about anything else the instructor <laughs> is shouting at you you just have to keep track of what they are saying okay love it I, i'm not thinking about the business i'm not thinking about anything else so it's it's both workout and meditation in some sense hi everyone happy sunday i am priya from it's okay r and today we are excited to bring to you our episode 2 of how i am building this where we cover journeys of south asian entrepreneurs from different backgrounds if you are new to it's okay r it's okay r is a content platform for south asian immigrants where we aim to educate entertain and empower them our first episode was with chitra uh, who's the founder of tarima you can catch that on ig live um series that's there on instagram but today let's um welcome ragot thank you for taking out a little bit of your sunday with us we are so excited to have you on board when i was reading up about the cumin club i was fascinated i was like wait when i was in chicago why was this uh something that i was not aware of because truly based on what you said um the food the indian food culture especially in the downtown area of chicago is notoriously tough to find like really good food so i was so excited to learn more about it but before we dive further it would be great if you could tell our followers and listeners about the cuban club and what it is because it's really too good to be true absolutely thank you for having me it's uh, it's a pleasure to join you this this sunday uh and i believe you're based in east coast yes i was actually in chicago and then i moved to the east coast right now in the new york new jersey area that's awesome hope you're having some good weather this weekend yes uh, spring starts today cannot complain mm-hmm. <laughs> hey everyone thanks for joining uh this is ragot from the cumin culinary brands we are a chicago based venture backed ethnic food startup uh we are on a mission to make authentic indian food readily accessible around the world so we are doing it primarily using innovative technology to preserve indian food in ways that it has not, never been done before we use freeze drying as a technology to preserve the food without any preservatives very different from any packaged food that you can find on store shelves this is quite unique it comes out of our research and development center in coimbatore in india and we uh, you know distribute our meal kits from the website thecuminclub.com we ship to all 50 states in the us and we the prices start at $4.99 which makes it a very convincing case for your everyday meal requirements Yeah that's super interesting Ragod is it true that it truly takes 5 minutes for me to get my favorite indian food uh, ready to eat and uh absolutely yeah i just finished my meal that's why i was a minute late but it did take me 5 minutes yes <laughs> Awesome and you have so many options on your website and for everyone who's tuned in we have something exciting um till the very end for all of you as well so stay tuned till the very end but ragot before we learn a little more about the cumin club i would love to learn a little bit more about your background what made you start this and your journey um a little bit Absolutely yeah i grew up in india in uh, in tamil nadu I worked in uh, bangalore for 2 years and uh, i'm you know used to all the different amazing food indian cuisines offer and i my next stop in my journey was in bentonville arkansas it was uh, middle of uh, nowhere us but yes. since then i've lived in austin texas and chicago in illinois and the common theme regardless of how big the city got is that indian food has a very bad reputation here i think it is always seen as something you eat in a buffet it's always seen as let's go there on a sunday let's eat more than we should and of course you know you're not going to feel i'm good. guilty of it for sure that's how i ate my indian food in chicago mm-hmm. yeah it's not going to sit well and the next day is not going to be good so there's a little bit of a bad reputation for indian food but you know hopefully we can change it one meal at a time and that's when uh you know it all came together i was in business school here in chicago 
I was doing it part time while working full time at Groupon. Uh, so life hmm. was life was quite busy, and it, the, you know eating right was very difficult, especially because I'm a vegetarian. Most of the vegetarian options are Capri's sandwich or just French fries. You know that's not how you're supposed to eat, <laughs> and uh, you know it, it, it was starting to take a toll on me and on my well-being. Uh, interesting enough, uh, my mom came to my rescue all the way from India by shipping me something. She did not call it meal kit, but it was what it was. Right? It was everything mixed together in right proportions. Uh, it was a it was a sabudana kichdi, and then there was a, a rice upma. All I had to do was add hot water, or I, I had to throw it into an instant pot, and it'll be ready for me in five to ten minutes. So wow. when uh, I found this, uh, you know, the rest of my MBA was uh, pretty much going, you know, just eating these meals. Uh, after I graduated, I decided to pursue this as a business. um if my mom could find food without preservatives that tastes authentic in my region of india there is got to be similar players and similar technology in other parts of india so i quit my job moved to india for 6 months went mm-hmm. all around india trying to establish what is the state of food preservation in india and learn more about freeze drying and uh you know set up our operations in coimbatore and then i moved back to the us and you know for the last 3 years we've been uh, really successful at uh, you know having this brand out in the world the cumin club has been the go to meal option for a lot of indian expats which makes me really happy you know being one of expats myself and uh in the, in the q3 of last year we were able to get uh venture capital uh which is a good recognition for a brand that's coming out of india and that's coming that's creating for the world i always look at it as india has exported talent and software products for a couple of, you know couple of decades now it's about time india starts ex- exporting its culture and you know the good parts of the culture <laughs> and it culture always starts with food vegetarian food especially for a world that is moving towards sustainability uh, that is moving more towards flexitarianism reducitarianism we want indian food to play a larger role in the world in the global food scene so yeah that's a little bit about myself and invariably i ended up talking about the company <laughs> so <laughs> no that's super interesting because i i know that you i had heard that you guys are a uh, venture backed so i would have learned to learn a little bit more about it but truly like before we go any further is it like um you know how our moms sometimes would try to pack us like an upma which is like they would try their best to put it in a container which will last for like 3 to 5 or 7 days and then you put hot water is that how the whole process for um the cuban club also works and plus i know that you guys have a lot of variety so you guys you also offer like a pav bhaji to a curry and i know it's one of the most popular options is this how it works for every single thing that you're talking about or is it for a couple of options so that's where our r and d center comes into picture each dish is different in the way it is preserved some of them are fully cooked and then freeze dried uh freeze drying you know it's it sounds like a big word at the outset but end of the day what it means is moisture water is why food goes bad that increases the bacterial growth etc you can either heat the food to remove all the moisture or you can cool the food to extreme low temperature to remove the moisture so we do the latter we cool the food so much that every bit of moisture becomes an ice cube of its own and then we pass low heat to take all the ice cubes through the sublimation process a little bit of uh, you know going to high school science here but sublimation is when you know a solid state goes to gaseous state without liquid yeah. state right so that's why what's left behind is still very nutritious the form factor the you know the uh, presentation everything is so good 
and you know we've been openly challenging uh, everyone that uh, make your own pav bhaji make this pav bhaji give it to a friend if they could tell the difference then we are out of business <laughs> right so <laughs> well i definitely need like that is a great idea for us to also try so i am definitely going to be trying that but everything you said and uh, where you're coming from is so interesting because like we um, as a culture are big on like vegetarian food um, and that's something that we have a hard time like figuring it out here plus i'm personally very excited about more south asian things becoming mainstream mm. uh, and we are seeing that happen in pockets and like it would be a true joy if indian food is looked at differently and it's no longer like it's so spicy or it's like something that you eat once in a time but if only the way um the western world has adopted like so many other food cuisines if we could do the same and i think this is like the perfect first step where people can enjoy so many um things and um like just to like when i was like going through this and preparing for this i was like wait my brother is going to be moving soon the one thing my parents are concerned about is like what is he going to eat like he he just has no idea how this has happened and then i i was like researching about cuban club so super excited about everything and i'm definitely doing the pav bhaji from indian street and pav bhaji from cuban club and making sure that uh, we do a taste test there so super excited um tell us a little bit about uh, you guys being venture back to like i know it's like um, exciting it's tough to happen because there are so many businesses who start at a smaller scale but truly being able to um expand so quickly how was the journey and um, how, like anything that you can share because i understand it comes with a little bit of complications would be helpful for our listeners who are trying to build their businesses as well absolutely yeah yeah i mean it all starts with the project right you you have your full time job you you have a passion towards something and you are tinkering on it on the side and that's how the cumin club started as well and when uh, we were able to demonstrate uh, reasonable growth and especially during the pandemic when everyone was working from home it just doesn't mean that we have the time to cook we are in back to back yeah. zoom calls if you get 5 minutes to eat your lunch that's a big deal so that's where the cumin club came into picture our 5 minute meal kits are a perfect way to you know just get your day going uh, between the zoom calls so when we uh, were able to grow it to uh, you know uh, about half a million dollars in annual revenue that's when we were able to present it to the venture capital world uh, you know for anyone who's listening there is angel investors and there are venture capitalists and uh you know there is an ecosystem that exists uh it's always good to raise capital when you don't need it when you are not yeah. desperate looking, looking desperate. for it right? exactly so we did just that we were able to sustain our business uh you know a reasonable growth by just uh you know uh, doing what we can and we took the story to the investors and said if the 500000 dollar kind of growth came from no marketing only because food was good and people told their friends then imagine what it would be when we start putting more marketing dollars towards it we start telling a story we start reaching out to not just the indian community but friends of indian community we all have friends who like indian food but they don't know yes. how to make it or you know and we are not happy with any of the restaurants here to tell them that hey this is where you should go so we are uh, we were able to demonstrate that kind of uh, organic growth and it was good to get those conversations going it it is always a roller coaster when it comes to ra- raising capital uh, it took us about 3 months for the round to come together it took us about 40 to 50 different conversations different vcs to get to the two vcs that we really liked and they re- really liked us so in some sense yeah. it's a matchmaking process but it was a good journey and at the end of it 
we have uh, board members and board observers from the VC world who are guiding us in the right direction, who are giving us the right resources and the right introductions. So I always you know, uh, tell my friends, start the business, grow it to a certain point, and then figure out who are the right people to grow it further, go after them, and not just the capital they have to offer, but their expertise they have to offer, and then you'll be on a good path towards success. That's truly amazing. That's truly amazing. And thank you for sharing a little bit about uh, that piece, because I know so many uh, of the people who are looking to build that business want to move to that next stage, but truly never understand what that journey looks like. So appreciate you um, sharing that. Within this whole journey or in this entire process, was there a time when you were like, this is it, I want to give up? Or uh, what was like the most challenging time? Because as entrepreneurs, as you're building your business, I feel those uh, lows come in a lot more than the highs. Uh, so anything you can share there will be um, good. Absolutely. I think I've been lucky to have two other co-founders in the business who joined me right from the beginning. And uh, the three of us, we are a good support system for each other. And we've been able to carry us through the lows. Uh, I, I can share one of those moments where, uh, you know, when the COVID initially started, the global supply chain just completely froze. No one was able to ship anything from one, one country to another. So what that meant for us is from doing how many of a thousand dollars per day we were at to going to zero, you know, not not a drop in sales, it's an absolute zero. And every oh day God. you are at zero for uh, a week, a month, then you really start thinking about giving up. But it was uh, good that the three of us were able to motivate each other. Uh, just, you know, try uh, all different pos possible ways to start shipping things back again when uh, the supply chain kind of started rolling back. And yeah, it was it was difficult, but at the same time, when we restarted the business, uh, some of the customers who we had to send a refund because we couldn't fulfill their orders, yeah. they were nice enough to write us a note saying, "We still support you. We'll you know send us an email when things are back." And uh, guess what? When we were back, we were back with the bang. So from lows to highs in a matter of few oh. weeks. Uh, it's yeah, it's it's a roller coaster, but uh, I think it is well worth it. No, we we are glad that you stayed and you pushed through because how else would we uh, get like Indian food in five minutes? Because truly, it also is an elaborate journey to generally cook Indian food. So I'm glad that uh, is over and you're still there and um, you are uh, catering to the, like a huge South Asian immigrant population here. But tell us about a time which was like um, your, your most proud moment or the biggest success that you will like cherish forever with um, the Cuban Club. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think uh, anytime a customer of ours writes us a, a note, an email, uh, with their experience, we cherish that a lot. You know, uh, it could be, uh, sorry, just to give you a couple of examples. Uh, there is a customer who was ordering these meal kits to their elderly parents who were, uh, you know, with COVID and everything, people just couldn't move easily. Yes. And for to be able to take care of their parents while not right next to them, uh, they were so uh, glad we were able to help and we were so glad we were able to help, right? So we cherish those moments. And there are a few other moments like um, there is a, a customer uh, who used to live in New York. Uh, you know, New York has a really good Indian food scene. Yeah. She ended up moving to Oklahoma and uh, I was on a long chat with her and she was very happy and grateful that uh, something as good as what she used to eat in New York is now available in Oklahoma. Uh, and, you know, that's when the light bulb went for us, where we're like, we're truly democratizing Indian food, like it has never been done before. And, you know, uh, those are the moments we absolutely cherish. 
So, to, like that's totally um, important. And I'm, like the more we've been talking to people, I feel like when you directly hear from your customers and you realize that uh, they're enjoying what you've built so much is the most meaningful one. So that's that's amazing. I can't personally wait to um, try and then set, ship it off to my brother who will be like moving and then uh, share it with a lot of people because I know it's easier in the New York, New Jersey area, but there are so many other places where you just have a really hard time getting something um uh on the on the table so very exciting um tell us long term like what are you thinking about the cumin club or what's next for ragot like what what's the plan mm mm-hmm. absolutely so the the cumin club is uh, headed into a hyper growth path currently we are growing at about 40% month over month wow. so we are you know doing a, a day in and day out job of keeping up with the demand we are really glad a lot of happy customers are bringing us more happy customers and you know that's the best thing that can happen to a brand uh so keeping up with growth is always uh, top of mind and it's part of what's next and uh what's even more interesting to us is the r&d center we are creating new recipes uh we are launching uh sambar idli uh again this ah, is love not that breakfast option for me mm-hmm. the, again this is not uh this is not the frozen sambar idli this is going to be different uh you know the right vegetables the right recipes uh you know just made in uh the right region of india freeze dried which is uh you know when you as a customer when you open the pack you're just adding ho- uh, hot water to it and it just comes back to life really well and uh, hyderabadi biryani and uh, we are going after you know uh, uh, cuisines from uh, west bengal cuisines from uttar pradesh so just having more regions represented because we always say it's not indian cuisine it's cuisines of india there is a big difference that. Big, mm-hmm. there's a there's a huge difference in how different parts of india eat and we want to be a place where people of all these different diverse backgrounds can come together and enjoy the food enjoy each other's food and uh tell their friends who are indian or non indian to try the food so yeah for sure and i feel like it's a there's a whole new world with the non indian community as well where all people know about is like butter chicken um and the only thing that or chicken tikka masala that they can order so i and when i have introduced so many of those friends to like south indian food or like an idli sambar they are mind blown that oh you can actually have something a little more milder as well which they were just not aware of so i'm excited for this to like just like scale and reach uh, a lot of people i definitely think it's the right step um mm-hmm. to make indian food uh, mainstream but um ragot are there other uh, south asian businesses that you've been following um anything you can want to share about them or anything you like about them um would also be something our listeners would be curious to learn mm-hmm, mm-hmm. absolutely i mean there is there's a moment in uh, history in the making right now where the american palate is getting more and more diverse you know people are getting used to eating food that you know that's from different parts of the world different flavor profiles different palate etc and uh what's what makes me really happy is uh a, seeing a brand like omsom omsom makes starter kits for south asian cuisines uh like you know vietnamese cuisine okay. uh japanese cuisine and so on uh it's good to see wow. that omsom is uh you know creating a market where people are being introduced to making vietnamese food at home never happened before mm. making yeah. you know malaysian uh, food at home and so on so we are uh, really happy for them and uh, you know we uh, always uh, root for them and keep track of them and there are a lot of other uh, businesses that are started by indian immigrants uh, you know healthy geek 
um, it, it's a brand started by a good friend of mine that's bringing the uh, uh, the, the you know sub nutrition supplements like the ashwagandha and even the basics like turmeric into the mainstream and making more people yeah. aware of it. Uh, we are also uh, happy for brands such as Diaspora, Kolkata Chai Company, and uh, yes. Madhu Madhu Chocolates. These are all South Asian brands that are bringing something that's so close to our culture into the mainstream into you know part of the western life and i think this trend is here to stay and uh, you know it's going to be interesting to see how these businesses play out yeah no for sure i feel i learned a lot about these businesses and definitely i can say like at least turmeric is one spice that has definitely become mainstream now with it being introduced in uh, every single thing here from beauty products to like the lattes it's it's there everywhere so uh, it's de- definitely exciting i will be checking them out we uh, learned a lot about the cumin club your business your journey but would love to learn a little bit more about you uh, now and this is the segment which is chai coffee with priya i like named it uh, mm-hmm. last time so uh, it's going to be a little bit of this and that and then we'll just so uh, a- learn to learn Yes, it's a, go ahead. It's a it's a chai and a coffee, or <laughs> it's chai or coffee, depending upon who who I am talking to. So my first this or that is chai or coffee. Which which side do you lean in on? <laughs> I'm on coffee. <laughs> okay, you're on coffee. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, my next one is coriander or no coriander or dhania or no dhania. Which side do you lean in on? Oh, absolutely, coriander. You know, more coriander okay. than no coriander. The better. So can we expect coriander in uh, the cumin club bowls as well is I, that a part of it I want to say maybe more than half of the dishes have coriander yeah oh that's cool and then um uh, pineapple on pizza is it a yay or a nay well uh kind of indifferent um not a okay. big, not a big pizza person but uh <laughs> not a big pineapple person either so I'm not going to be the judge of whether it's good or not. Okay. Okay, that's fair. That's fair, but I think you're a truly unique person who is not a pizza person is not oh, that's good to know. Um the the next one is books or movies. Mhm. Uh movies for me. Okay. And which uh, has been the la- last movie that you watched that you truly enjoyed or what is your go-to movie? Mhm. Yeah, I I watch uh you know mix of uh, different languages. Tamil, Telugu, Hindi, uh, you know, uh, the Hollywood movies for sure. Uh, uh, the the recent one I watched is uh, a Tamil movie called uh, Mahan. Uh, okay. It, yeah, it, it was a, a really good movie from a young director. Uh, his name is Karthik Subaraj. Made uh, about ten movies, and I believe eight of the of you know n- not very mainstream. just very nicely done movies so i'm really rooting for him have to check it out um my next one is we've been talking about food a lot so it is going to be a huge miss if we don't talk about your favorite food and your go to um indian food um at any time mhm yeah absolutely so there are probably a couple of uh, you know favorites the first one is sabadana kichdi Uh, okay. there is there's a a south indian version of it um you know that's just local to where i am from it's uh the same ingredients but different different spices absolutely love that and that was actually why this business exists now you know uh okay. when i tried what my mom sent to me uh as a kit uh it was just like she made it right so sabadana kichdi is my favorite uh i'm recently turning into a fan of dal chawal uh okay. not just from the cumin club just making it at home or from anywhere uh you know just the simplicity of it you know it's just dal and rice but it's such a comfort food you know you have a bowl of dal chawal and you feel good so 
it's yes. uh, comfort food nutritious our sunday meal at all times is what we do as well so exactly. that's uh, that's amazing um tell us about like the biggest culture shock that you faced when you moved here like mm-hmm. uh, you know it's like a tough time adjusting when you are initially new yeah so interesting enough i had the reverse of a culture shock i moved okay. from bangalore which is you know as happening as it gets as a metropolitan to bentonville arkansas which shuts okay. down at 8 pm in the night so yeah. i in uh, you know in in many ways i had the reverse culture shock but again uh, it's just uh, how the how you know middle of nowhere us is but uh, you know since then i've moved to bigger cities and i think the uh, you know the true culture shock for me is how uh you know the uh, the mexican food the sushi of the world have just become part of american life uh yes. it's just part of weekly rotation of what you eat but then there are so many other cuisines around the world which is seen in a different light more of yeah. an in- indulgence so i i think that was a culture shock to me like you know um uh, chipotle has good food no doubts but indian food can be as good as well for everyday food why is it not seen the same way so yeah well if only there was a rajma chawal uh, chipotle joint out there you know it's it is going to like change the face of how people eat indian food but no and, uh, we uh, love that but sorry no and you can trust us uh, to make it happen you know we'll make yes, it yes yes for sure food. <laughs> yeah like for everything that i'm seeing from a menu standpoint i'm truly excited for like what's coming and excited to try what's there um the the last one there is like what do you miss back home and i know it it has to be food because we are like truly you're truly building this a startup but what else do you miss back home uh, definitely family right so uh the uh, you know about 10 years in the us now i think uh um, just not being able to travel overnight to see parents and be there for occasions has been difficult uh i think the us is a land of opportunities and uh india is home so it's yeah. been a tough balance uh, and i hope that you know the international travel becomes faster <laughs> yeah. with uh, you know hypersonic travel and so on and uh. you know the world gets smaller at some point for everyone who's listening and looking for their next business idea here's from ragot like try to figure out how we can get home faster because that's going to be like a true miracle uh, would love to close it out um, and again this one is me taking inspiration from run vijay and shark tank india for our last segment which is how do you um, unwind ragot like with so much going on like what is what what are a couple of things that you do that make you like truly take the step back and enjoy everything that you're building for sure yeah i try to unwind by going to orange theory uh, you know it's a okay. it's a one hour fitness fitness class i mean I, i have a very different reason to go to orange theory it's one hour of not thinking about anything else the instructor <laughs> is shouting at you you just have to keep track of what they are saying okay love it I, i'm not thinking about the business i'm not thinking about anything else so it's it's both workout and meditation in some sense oh, yeah that's so, that's such a great way to put about it like put, like frame it because i i did a couple of those and i was like well it's too <laughs> tough you know <laughs> but yes i think definitely a great way to um shut down uh, my last question is any tips for and tips and tricks for anyone who's looking to start out their business or side hustle or anything any advice you would give them mm-hmm. absolutely you know um, through the business school and post business school this is technically my third venture um, you know the f- first two uh they take off and did you know die in different stages but throughout what i've learned is when you're starting to think about a business write a one page summary 
there are two reasons for that. One is when you start writing is when you think about the intricacies. When it's all in your head, it all sounds like happy path. But when you write it, you catch yourself in the middle of each and every sentence and you think more about how to fix and how to make this a real business. So always write a one page summary and share it with people you trust, you know, uh, other entrepreneurs in your network or professors or classmates, just share it with them and, you know, they will be able to give you the right kind of feedback and early validation before you spend more hours in that business. So always start with one page summary is what I tell all my friends. That is a, a great takeaway. And with that, for everyone who is listening and stayed with us through the process, we have something exciting to offer. Like, Raghoth, would you want to share it or would you want me to share um, how to, to order? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, just a quick summary of the business. The Cumin Club offers five minute meal kits, uh, you know, curated meal kits, which comes with the main dish, the curry and the rotis, which comes with the South Indian food with chutney, sambar and the condiments. So when we say it's a meal, it's a complete meal, it's a balanced meal and the prices start at $4.99 per meal. It's shipped to you for free. Shipping is always free. And uh, for uh, the listeners and followers of It's OK Yar, we created a promo code, take 15 yar you know, staying close Love. to the brand. <laughs> Again, it's take 15 yar to get 15% off your first order at thecumanclub.com. We have about 35 different menu items from different regions of India. I'm very confident that, you know, once you try it, you will like it. Always feel free to send us feedback. I'm at ragoth at thecumanclub.com. It was great talking to all of you. Uh, please yeah. do get in touch if you're thinking about starting a business. I would love to be of help. Yeah, and for everyone who listened, we will be sharing all of these details as well in the description box. It's a no-brainer. It's 4.99, you guys, and you have an amazing code with Take 15 Yar. So definitely use it and order it if you have not tried them um, before. But um, there's one beautiful thought that I read, uh, Raghav, that I want to end this with is the next best thing to having breakfast in your hometown is having breakfast from your hometown. I know it's from your blog. So on that note, uh, thanks, everyone. Remember, it's Take 15 Yard. We'll share all the details. Raghav, it was truly inspiring. We learned a lot. I'm sure everyone who tuned in learned a lot. Um, so thank you for being so transparent and truly building something that will make eating Indian food and preparing Indian food easy for everyone and hopefully at some point it becomes a lot more mainstream with that thank you for spending your Sunday appreciate everything you shared if you missed it you guys it will be on our IG live please tune in um, and definitely try the Cumin Club um, I can't wait to do the taste test as well so you will definitely be hearing from me thank, thank you, you so and um any, any, anything else, Rago, that you want to share, like where can our listeners follow you um, or any social media? And I will definitely be sharing that email address that you mentioned. But anything else that you want to um, share before we close it out? No, I mean, we have one channel where we sell, which is thecumanclub.com. And uh, the social media is the Cumin Club as well. Uh, please do follow us. We would uh, love to, you know, continue our journey towards making Indian food more accessible and not, you know, take the authenticity out of it. We always make sure it's taste of home and, uh, you know, looking forward to the journey. And let's see, you know, how the world yes. looks like 10 years from now. It's tasty, it's healthy, it's affordable, it's 4.99 and you have take 15 <laughs> yard. You guys, you got to try it. Thanks, Raghav. Have a wonderful Sunday and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for hosting. Okay, awesome. Bye.